but he also said, when is the next round of the Olympic trials? I said, it's in six weeks. He said, you know what? I might be able to get you ready by then. And I, I said, what's your plan, Doc? He said, well, you're not going to be able to train much up until then. You're going to have to let your neck rest and heal. But, and it won't be completely healed by then, but it'll be healed enough that you can still go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a doctor travel with you. And this doctor is going to stick you with 12 different shots of Novocaine all throughout your neck. So you won't feel the pain. You'll forget your neck is broken and you'll wrestle more freely. And he said, but I'm warning you, an hour after your matches are over, you're going to be in excruciating pain from your abuse your neck takes during these matches because the Novocaine's going to wear off. He said, are you okay with this? And I said, yes. And it worked. <laughs> I won the Olympic trials, and I won the Olympic me gold medal with a broken freaking neck. Please welcome Mr. Kurt Angle. There you go. Grab a seat. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well, happy birthday from us. And, and welcome back. Is this your Good personal to be back. Is this your personal cameraman? He's my guy. He's your He's guy. guy yeah. Well, enjoy yourself. So needless to say, welcome back to Pittsburgh. And uh, what area were you originally from, and what was your upbringing like? I grew up in the South Hills, uh, Dormont, Mount Lebanon, and then I kind of shimmied over to uh, Moon Township. <laughs> <laughs> Moon Township, huh? <laughs> uh, because it was closer to the airport, because I was doing so much traveling with the WWE and... Uh, it was just more convenient for me to live out there. And I actually love the place now. Nice. Yeah. And, and how did you get, get, growing up, how did you start getting into wrestling? If you could move the mic a little closer, that'd be oh, awesome. Uh, that's, that's a great uh, story. Um, my brother, Mark, um, he got a lot of trouble as a kid. <laughs> and uh, so the wrestling coach told him one day, um, why don't you take your aggressions out on the wrestling mat? So the wrestling coach got him to, to join the wrestling team. And he kind of uh, was like the guy that we looked up to in our family. So we all followed him, what he did. And uh, we ended up starting the wrestling when we were younger kids. And I wasn't very good. Actually, I got pinned a lot and I cried a lot. And uh, the light bulb didn't go off in my head until high school. And uh, a tragedy had to occur for that to happen. My dad was killed in a construction accident when I entered high school. And losing him at a year, young age like that was really tough. And uh, he was our biggest supporter. He, you know, sports were important with my dad. He, he really uh, wanted us to all be involved in sports all year round. And he never missed any of our, our sporting events. He always showed up. And I loved him for that. So I dedicated my athletic career to my father. And when I did that, I started getting more determined and more focused and started setting goals for myself. And by my senior year, I won a state championship in wrestling. And uh, that's where it all started. And I never looked back. So you actually went on to the 1996 Summer Olympics and you wrestled with a broken neck. Is that correct? <laughs> a broken freaking neck. A broken freaking neck. <laughs> uh, yeah, the story is true. A lot of fans don't, they like say, is that really happened? And yeah, it did. Uh, what happened was I was at uh, the first round of the Olympic trials in 1996 and uh, I was having a great tournament. I was wrestling in the semifinals and I got thrown on my head and I broke my neck and I didn't know it. And my neck was in so much pain and my arms went completely numb and I barely won the semifinals and I went on to the finals later on that day and I didn't want to wrestle in the finals. But long story short, if I didn't wrestle in the finals and I didn't win in the finals, I would have had to wrestle in a mini tournament um, to wrestle the U.S. Open champion. So whoever wins in the finals at this tournament gets a bye all the way to the Olympic trials finals, and he has a much easier road. If I would have forfeited and taken second, I would have had to wrestle in this huge mini tournament, and I would have had to win the tournament to wrestle the U.S. Open champion. I don't know if I explained it well. But um, so my brothers were like, you're wrestling. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And they're like, no, you're wrestling because you won't have to go in that mini tournament. So if there's something wrong with your neck, you might as well just try to wrestle tonight and try to win the U.S. Open and get a bye to the finals. And they're slapping me in the face and getting me ready. And I'm like, ow, my neck hurts. 
And I, I ended up winning in the finals, barely. And so I got the, the bye to the finals of the Olympic trials. And what happened was the next day I went home and the doctor took an MRI of my neck and he said, listen, you have four broken vertebrae in your neck and you have two dicks sticking directly in your spinal cord. He said, you're done wrestling. You can't wrestle anymore. And I was devastated. So me being a, a, the stubborn person I am and the person that will never give up, I went to another doctor to get a second opinion. And this doctor basically said the same thing, but he also said, when is the next round of the Olympic trials? I said, it's in six weeks. He said, you know what? I might be able to get you ready by then. And I, I said, what's your plan, doc? He said, well, you're not going to be able to train much up until then. You're going to have to let your neck rest and heal. But, and it won't be completely healed by then, but it'll be healed enough that you can still go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a doctor travel with you. And this doctor's going to stick you with 12 different shots of Novocaine all throughout your neck. So you won't feel the pain. You'll forget your neck is broken and you'll wrestle more freely. And he said, but I'm warning you, an hour after your matches are over, you're going to be in excruciating pain from the abuse your neck takes during these matches because the Novocaine's going to wear off. He said, are you okay with this? And I said, yes. And it worked. <laughs> I won the Olympic trials, and I won the Olympic gold medal with a broken freaking neck. It's <laughs> amazing. Long story short. That's a movie right there. <laughs> yeah, it could be, huh? So I, I got to ask, I have never interviewed you yet. Is this your first... Q&A? My first Q&A at Steel City Con, wow. yes. Wow. Well, well, thanks. I, I always try to dodge them. <laughs> <laughs> with stories like Couldn't that. could dodge today. <laughs> no, with stories like that, you got, we have to tell them. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind telling my stories. I'm pretty much an open book. My wife tells me I'm too open. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I got a few more questions for you, then we'll go to audience questions. Okay. Now, you've wrestled all around the world, uh, Japan, Mexico, U.S. Are the crowds and the wrestling any different as you go to different countries for you? Um, yeah, you, you know, in Japan, they're a little more well-behaved. They don't get rowdy. They kind of keep their cool and they clap when you do something good. And they're not real vocal, but they're, they're into it. Um, the, the biggest, best crowd ever for me was Pittsburgh, PA. <laughs> yeah. But it's my hometown, so you understand why. Um, but um, no, the, when, when I would go to uh, the UK, uh, those fans are incredible. They, they're really loud. They're crazy. They really love it. They really appreciate it. I mean, when I was in TNA, and it was a small company, um, I, I went over to the UK, and we drew 12,000 fans at an event. And, you know, this was a real company. It wasn't supposed to draw that many fans, but they're just really passionate. So, And they don't, they don't get to see wrestling as much as we do here in the United States. Because here in the United States, WWE goes to uh, every city, every city, uh, each city probably five or six times a year. So they're in Pittsburgh six times a year, whether it's SmackDown or Raw, but they show up. And the UK, they only get, you know, one or two WWE events a year. So it's a lot different over there. And they appreciate it more. But I love going to Australia, uh, South Africa. Um, I, I've been just about everywhere. The only country I haven't been in is China. And I know WWE goes there now, but they didn't back then. So growing up, what were your wrestling heroes? I mean, where, did you have favorite wrestlers um, growing up? Uh, well, okay, this is great. <laughs> Me being an amateur wrestler and my, my brothers that were kind of bullies, um, I wanted to watch pro wrestling, but they, they were like, no, that's the fake stuff. You're the real deal. You know, we all, we're real wrestlers. We're real amateur wrestlers. The fake, the pro wrestling is the fake wrestling. So I didn't get to watch a lot of it when I was a kid, but I really loved Bruno Sammartino. Um, yeah. He, he uh, and my brothers did too. If Bruno was on, we were watching, but no, no other wrestler. Uh, but uh, I did get to go to one event. I, my family didn't have a lot of money, uh, but they, my mother and father gave me a birthday gift. And I remember Bruno was wrestling at the Civic Arena against Larry Zabisco. And uh, I got to go down there and watch that event. And that, was, th that had a big impression on me. But I, I didn't watch wrestling after that. And uh, up until the Olympics, um, I never even thought about it. And then out of the blue, I get a call from Vince McMahon. And he says, hey, uh, we want to offer you a contract. Why don't you come up here 
to Connecticut and I want to meet up with you. And I went up there and I met with him and he gave me a multi-million dollar deal, uh, a 10 year deal. And I was like, this is crazy because I never had money before. And, um, and I said, well, Vince, uh, I just want to tell you one thing. If I, if I sign, I can never lose. <laughs> he was like, uh, uh, you know what? We'll, don't call us. We'll call you. <laughs> so I, I went back home, but I still had the contract, and I, I went back to my agent, Ralph Sindrich. Uh, he was a really famous agent for the NFL football players, but he was also an amateur wrestler, wrestler when he went to college. And uh, I gave him the contract. He said, you're not doing that. That's the fake stuff. You're the real deal. He was also on me about it. And uh, he threw it in the trash. And I was like, oh, like, you know, that's, that's millions of dollars. And uh, he said, don't worry, I'll get you a, another job. And uh, he ended up getting me another job. It was as a sportscaster for Fox 53 back in 1997. And I was the absolute worst sportscaster of all time. <laughs> and, and you know what? I should have known the first day I was on the air I, uh, I, went, I went into the studio, and I had my scripts, and they were all in order, and I ran into the producer. My scripts flew up in the air, and they went all out of order. So he's like, sit down, just read from the teleprompter. So the, the teleprompter is like on the, on the camera, and they, it has words for you to say. And I look up, and the teleprompter goes blank. <laughs> so now I'm like, I have this ear plug in uh, with my producer talking in my ear, and I'm not saying anything for like a minute. And it seemed like forever. And he's like, say something, Kurt, say anything. And I remembered the first thing was Duquesne basketball. So I said, uh, Duquesne basketball played today. Let's go to the highlights. And I would go to the highlights. And I didn't know their name. So I was like, there's number 71 with a layup. And, and when, when that was over, I didn't know what was next. I didn't know football or basketball or, or, or you know, uh, baseball was next. And I said, well, next is football, and let's go to the highlights. And we go to the highlights, and it's baseball. <laughs> and this, this <laughs> happened the whole eight minutes. The eight minutes <laughs> felt like an eternity. And uh, right after, at the end, all the scripts were all messed up because my uh, weather lady and the news anchor were looking for the proper scripts while we were doing the sport, sport the, uh, the Kurt Angle sports talk. Uh, they, they were trying to look for the right uh, uh, verbiage. So it, they were all over the place. And it looked like all three of us, we looked like we just got done having sex. And we were just like... It was it was the most it was the most intense stressful moment of, of my life. Eight minutes and it seemed like forever. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I, got, I got one more question for you. We're gonna get to questions from you guys. If you have a question on this side of the room, you're gonna line up over there, and Kyle's gonna get your question. If you have a question on this side of the room, line up over there, and I'll get your your question. So I just want to end with this. How did the whole you suck thing start? Uh, I, could, I could blame that on Edge. Um, there was a night where uh, the fans were chanting when my song played, they would chant, Angle, Angle. And Edge one night said, they shouldn't chant Angle, they should chant, you suck. So the fans started doing it, it caught on. And it, even if I was a good guy, they still said, you suck. So it didn't matter, but I, I actually came to like it. I, it. I got used to it, and I was like, they're going to say it anyway, so you might as well enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get, thank you so much. And let's get to some questions from you guys, right, right over on that side of the wall. Your name and your question. Uh, my name is Caden. Nice to see you. Uh, my question is, we know you exited WWE in the, uh, I believe, the summer of 2006. Um, Grant, knowing that the WWE took a direction to the PG area, more kid-friendly uh, product. How do you see yourself, if you were to stay in the WWE, like fitting in with that product? Or do you think you would have left to try TNA anyways? Because we know you found your craft in uh, TNA. You fit um, in pretty well there. Do you see yourself you know, fitting in at all? I, I think that it was good for me to leave in 2006. I had a lot of issues going on, personal issues. Um, I was getting injured quite a bit. Um, the company was still working me to the bone. And uh, I, I just, I had no choice. I, ha I had to get out. So I left in 2006 and went to TNA. Uh, but the PG era, I liked it. I, I really did. I, I didn't mind it at all. Don't get me wrong, I loved the, the Attitude Era. That, that was the best era in wrestling. But they got a little crazy. I mean, a little too crazy. I mean, you know, one character was a pimp. 
Another character was a, a porn star. I mean, it was, it was ridiculous. Uh, but um, uh, I believe the Ruthless Aggression era came after the Attitude Era. And I, I got to enjoy that era. That was good. That was where John Cena and Dave Batista came in. And they had a, a big impact. Uh, but uh, the PG era, I, I didn't mind it. I, I know that um, it was geared for kids. And I think that WWE... It's a family event. It's a family show. And I, I believe that it should be PG rated and that kids should be able to watch it. I mean, if they go back to the Attitude Era, there's a lot of parents that trust that their kids are going to watch this and they're not going to see any garbage. But if they go back to the Attitude Era and the parents don't know about it, they're going to be pretty pissed off <laughs> that their kids are watching some crazy stuff. So I, I just think that you can watch it as a family now. And I think that's a lot better than young adults watching it and only young adults, you know, and no women were watching during the, some women were watching during the Attitude Era, but not a lot. But I think now as a family, it's, it's more special. Thank you. How you doing, Justin? Uh, I'm trying to figure out if my uncle was full of crap. He said he used to wrestle with you back in the day. <laughs> what uh, was his name? Kenny Hasselrig. Oh, God, yeah, Kenny. Okay, yeah. Oh, man, he was my coach in college. Uh, Kenny, Kenny should have won the Nationals. He took second, and he took sixth. Uh, uh, actually, no, he took sixth his sophomore year. He didn't place his junior year. And uh, that's a long story, but Kenny, Kenny needs to tell you that story. That was, that was, that was a disaster for Clarion because they were expected to win the Nationals that year. And every wrestler, none of them placed. It was a horrible year, his junior year. But his senior year, he took second at the Nationals, and I thought he could have won it. And uh, he coached me, very, very talented individual. Um, he, he was a natural athlete, and uh, I really enjoyed uh, him coaching me. He taught me a lot. But tell him I said hi. I definitely will. I want to, it's, it's really And tell him I said you suck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely will, man. It's very nice to talk to you, man. Thank you. Hi, uh, my, my name's Cameron. I, uh, first off, I want to say ha happy birthday to you. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and also, there was a promo that you had with, uh, Ray, with uh, Ray Mysterio. I don't want to say the exact promo because <laughs> I just want to know... It turned into a mem. Yeah. 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 I just, I just want to know if that promo like, ruined anything about you because of what you said during it. Because it was... Like pretty now, offensive because now it is funny and but some people would find it offensive especially today age. yeah yeah, yeah uh, definitely offensive <laughs> i mean listen i i said a lot of stuff back then i mean i, I you know uh, this was a time when i i was cutting a promo on ray mysterio and i said ray mysterio you're a boy in a man's world and i'm a man who loves to play with boys <laughs> And, and I was like, no, that's not what I meant. So I did this like three times. I messed up and said something perverted. And uh, so it became a mem, and uh, the fans loved it. But I was a heel back then, and uh, it, was able, it was a good time for the fans to make fun of me because I said something so messed up. But, I mean, I said a lot of stuff back then. I, I even said I'm not a fan of the black people. Like, I was like, I said some crazy stuff that Vince McMahon had me say, and it just wouldn't fly today. And, uh, you know, that, that was one of the promos that uh, people took offense to. And, uh, um, but I enjoyed doing it. <laughs> I really did. It was funny. Was was uh, was there anything that you like refused to say because it was that bad back then? Unfortunately, no. I said whatever Vince McMahon told me to, and I probably should have said some things I said. Yes, I regret some things. Yeah. Okay. All we're, right. Thanks. We're, we're going to head over to the other side of the room now, and we're going to get these three questions. Hello, Kurt. My name is Ken Bouchard. I am a former indie wrestling manager, and I want to first and foremost thank you for being the inspiration for when I went through school and training. Um, you just your your between your real career, like your full career as a pro non-professional professional wrestler yeah. <laughs> and a professional wrestler. So I want to thank you for that. And uh, second part of this question is. Your theme was angle, angle. Then it was you suck, you suck. Why is the best version of that with kazoos? 
<laughs> you mean Edge and Christian? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Edge and Christian, they were, uh, they were like uh, my, my best buddies in WWE. And we did a lot of pre-tapes and promos together. And uh, there was a segment where they were like, hey, we got kazoos. Uh, na- guess what we're going to do? Like, why don't you guess this, Kurt? And they were like, duh, duh. Duh, duh. And then, you know, they were humming the kazoo, and, uh, and I was like, I don't know what that is. And they're like, no, it's you suck, you suck. So it was just, uh, Edge and Christian were a lot of fun to be around. They were funny individuals, very entertaining, and we had a lot of entertaining promos and pre-tapes. But that was one of them, yeah. Okay, another question on this side of the room. Happy birthday, Kurt. My Thank name's you. Josh. Um, tell me some of your favorite pay-per-view matches of all time. Oh God, um, my this is hard for me to say, but um, my favorite match of all time was actually against Chris Benoit at the Royal Rumble 2003. Um, he was he reminded me of me. He had the same intensity. He had the you know same build, um, same athleticism. And uh, when we got together, it was, it was a war. Um, really intense matches. Uh, but, but the other matches that I really enjoyed, uh, one was, it was supposed to be at WrestleMania, but Vince McMahon didn't want to do it because this guy had an undefeated streak and he didn't want me to break it. And um, it was Undertaker, No Way Out 2006. I had a really good match with him uh, that was really special, and especially saying that about a big guy you know undertaker was a 300 pounder you know seven foot tall and uh to have a match like that with a guy that big is pretty incredible and that just tells you how good undertaker was uh but the other match one of my favorites was Shawn michaels wrestlemania 21. uh we really i i really believe in my mind it was the greatest match of all time Mm -hmm. Shawn and i just clicked and the crazy thing is we never worked before before that we never had a match together and uh during the week we were supposed to like get in the ring and practice moves and stuff we didn't do any of that we never even tied up and to have that kind of chemistry with sean that shows how good sean was i mean everybody considers him the greatest superstar of all time and i believe he is he's that good because he's never had a bad match (laughs) he's had an incredible match with everybody and that just shows you how good he is Okay, let's get these two questions, two questions over here, then we'll bounce back over to the other side. Um, hi, my name is Chase, and I'm a YouTuber, and I want to say happy birthday to you. Thank you. So I got one concerning question. So would you return to WWE and make another promo? And make another promo? Yeah, like spraying milk or something. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk all day and night, but I'm not going to wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 55 going on 80. <laughs> That, that's one nice. No, one you nice. know what? WWE has utilized me. Um, there was a last year I did a segment in Pittsburgh uh, where I uh, the milk truck came into the arena and I sprayed down Chad Gable and Otis with milk. That that was a remake of uh, what I did back against Stone Cold Steve Austin in 2001 when I drove the milk truck into the arena. So that was a remake of that. But they also had a birthday celebration for me last year. The WWE. So I do certain events with them. Uh, So I'm still signed with them. I have a contract with WWE. So I'm sure they're going to possibly use me for something at WrestleMania or Royal Rumble or something. So um, they they always come up with something. So I I eventually do something crazy with WWE, and I'm sure I will in the future. Okay, and. Hi, happy birthday, Kurt. Uh, Thank you. I just want to know, since you're from Pittsburgh, are you a true Yinzer? Are you a real? I am a Yinzer, but I'm and ashamed you, to say it when I'm outside of Pittsburgh. If you are, will you please go play for the Steelers because they really need your help? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. It's been a frustrating year. And you know what? They don't have that bad of a record. I mean, they should be like 0-13. Oh, That's how bad they've been playing. <laughs> but they're like, what, 7-6. and six, And... Uh, they're still alive, which is crazy. But um, uh, I'm just really surprised. I will tell you this. The defense is awesome. They, they have saved the offense on numerous occasions. We just need to get the offense to get moving. <laughs> we need Big Ben, exactly, yeah. Come out of retirement, Ben, just for one more year. 
<laughs> yeah, I agree. Okay, we're gonna head to the other side. We only have about 10 minutes left, so we'll try and get through as many years as possible. Lightning round. <laughs> hey, Kurt, I'm Derek. Uh, I'm a longtime fan, and uh, me and my teammates would listen to your intro song many times for warm up. I was just wondering if there's a song that stands out to you that you uh, would practice to or warm up to before matches. Yes. Um, I don't know if you remember my entrance song with TNA. Um, it, it, it was uh, derived from a song that I got from Vision Quest, the wrestling movie. Uh, if you've never seen it, are you a wrestler? Because I see those wrestling shoes. Okay, uh, if you've never seen the movie, you gotta see it. Um, it's called Vision Quest, they had a soundtrack. And one of the songs was called Lunatic Fringe. Okay. And I used that song for my entrance song in, uh, in, the, in TNA. And I had uh, John Cena's cousin, Trademark, he's a rapper. He rapped the verbiage for that song. And uh, that was my favorite entrance song, more than WWE, and I love my WWE entrance song. But uh, I love Lunatic Fringe, and uh, that, that was, uh, that's the song that I would get fired up to before I went out and competed. Um, it was from a wrestling movie, and it just got you in the mood of what you're about to do. And I thought it was really cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Hello, my name is Roy. Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, growing up, me and my dad used to watch SmackDown all the time, and one of our favorite combinations was uh, you versus Eddie Guerrero. Me yes. versus me. Me always rooting for Eddie because he was the good guy. My yeah. dad always loved the bad guys. I know. You love to hate me, right? <laughs> um, what is a good story you have with working with Eddie? Okay. Um, this is a good story. Uh, I remember one night, Eddie... Eddie, close to the time when he actually passed, uh, nobody knew that he had anything physically wrong with him. Uh, but you could tell Eddie wasn't the same. He was out of energy, he was pale, uh, and I'm sure it was because his heart wasn't working properly. But nobody really figured out what was wrong with him, and he never went to a doctor to get checked out. And uh, there was one night where I was with my crony, my group, uh, which uh, was Luther Reigns and uh, Mark Jindrak. And uh, we were out in the ring, we attacked Eddie Guerrero, and those guys were really beating him up for real. And uh, Eddie was pretty upset about it. I mean, when you, when you get in there and you're supposed to beat someone up, you're not supposed to beat him up for real. You're supposed to pretend like you're beating him up. And I guess these guys are really stiff on Eddie. So when, you're, when we went backstage after the match, Eddie came back, and we're in the gorilla. That's the part where you enter the arena. The wrestlers enter the arena. And, you know, Vince McMahon's there, and uh, all the producers are there. And uh, Eddie came up to me, and he's like, what the hell are you stiffing me for? You're beating me up for real out there. And I'm like, Eddie, I didn't touch you. He's like, yes, you did. And I said, Eddie, I swear I didn't touch you. And it was my, it was my other, my gang that was with me. And uh, Eddie pushes me, so I push him back, and Eddie goes to double leg me. And uh, <laughs> you don't double leg an Olympic gold medalist. <laughs> so Eddie went to double leg me, and I got him, and I got him in a front headlock, and I started choking him out. And um, and then uh, Big Show, which is crazy, I, I I wanted to, I couldn't beat him up to be honest with you, but I wanted to. He literally he grabbed me by the back of my singlet and lifted me up and grabbed Eddie by the back of his tights, lifted him up. He put Eddie at one side of the room and me on the other. And I got up, I had like little guy syndrome, like don't, you don't touch me like that. <laughs> like I was mad, like, you know, Big Show treated me like I was a little dog. And uh, I was like, whoa, man, this guy's strong. But so what happened was later on in the day, Bradshaw went up to Eddie and said, uh, Eddie, why would you double leg an Olympic gold medalist? And he goes, because I'm effing stupid. <laughs> so that was the story of, about Eddie. Um, Eddie would get, he was very passionate. And uh, when something wrong would happen, he would get really upset. And uh, he just loved the business so much. He never wanted to make mistakes. And he wanted everything to be perfect. And that's what made Eddie so special. We got time for just two more questions. What makes you never give up? Oh. 
who is that little girl over there? <laughs> it's my daughter. <laughs> yeah. uh. um, what makes me never give up? You, honey. Oh. You, Sophia, Juliana, Joseph, and Mama. Mommy. That's what makes me never give up, honey. Okay. Let's give one more question. You're going to be headed back to your booth to sign or your table to sign. We've got time for just one last question. I'm sorry. Happy birthday, Kurt. Thank you. Um, do you have any good rib stories from your time in WWE or any other promotions? Oh, gosh. I don't know if it's stuff that I could tell you. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to have to plead the fifth on that one. <laughs> Ask me another question. All right. Let's get one more question in. Who is, who is next in line that... Whoever. Just good question. It's got to be the best question of the panel. All right, my question is, what do you like better, being in TNA or WWE? Gosh, man, that's tough. You know, <laughs> plead the fifth. My wife's telling me, plead the fifth. All right, we get another uh, question. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 I'll answer that because okay. it, it, it's, a, it's a very uh, complicated answer. Um, I enjoyed WWE. I had a lot more fun there, especially at the be beginning of my career before I started injuring my neck over and over. Uh, I really loved WWE and, and the popularity of it. You know, when you were in WWE and you were main eventing and you were a world champion, you were a superstar. And uh, I'll never forget that. It's a great feeling to have. You know, there, there are thousands, millions of fans that adore you. Uh, whether they love you or hate you, they adore you one way or the other. Uh, but in TNA, I was able to find myself. I was able to... Um, I was able to do my own thing. Um, you know, in WWE, creative comes up with stuff for you. They write your stuff for you. Uh, they tell you who's going to win in your matches. They tell you everything, and you have to abide by it. And TNA, it was more like the Wild West. You know, we were able to uh, have a little more freedom of what we wanted to do and how we wanted to portray it. So I, I love both of them. And uh, I do believe that I went to both at the right times in my life. In 2006, I was broken down, um, having a problem with painkillers, injured all the time. Uh, I needed a break from the WWE because we were going 300 days a year. So I went over to TNA and they gave me a part-time contract and they gave me a boatload of money and I was able to do whatever I wanted to do. And if I didn't want to wrestle that night, I could just tell the boss I'm not going to wrestle tonight. She gave me the night off. So it, it was a lot more free for me. And, and, and I was able to, you know, I, the cool thing about it is TNA did their television shows in Orlando at uh, um, Universal Studios. So they had a big studio. They, they would seat about a thousand fans and we would have TV there every other week. We would do two TVs. So those three or four days that I would stay down in Orlando, I got to bring my wife and my kids and we went to freaking Disney World every other week. I mean, who goes to Disney World every two weeks for <laughs> during the whole year? Wow. It was a blast. We had so much fun. Rode on the rides. I uh, went to see Mickey Mouse. Had breakfast with Minnie Mouse. It was just a lot of fun. And it was fun for my kids. And that's what I love. So I love both of them. And I went back to the WWE in 2017. And it was the right time for me to come back. I got inducted in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I wasn't nearly, thank you. There you go. <laughs> I wasn't nearly the wrestler that I used to be, and that's why I retired. I lost a step, and I don't want, want the fans to remember me as this broken down old wrestler. So I, I retired early and uh, got out of it, and I never went back. There are wrestlers that still keep coming back, like Ric Flair and, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, do, uh, Terry Funk, when he was alive, he, was, he had like, I guess, 30 retirement matches. So, uh, but that's not me. I'm not going to be doing that either. Um, I, I, won't, I won't step foot in the ring again unless I'm cutting a promo. So that's it. But I want to thank everybody for showing up. I really appreciate it. Yes. And he's got a photo up, I think, coming up at 2 o'clock. A Pittsburgh legend, Kurt Angle. Actually, a wrestling legend. And just a regular old good old legend. Give it up, Kurt Angle, happy birthday. Oh, you could do better than that. It's his frickin' birthday in his hometown.